tonight. Good to see you all. Man. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer here tonight as we begin. We want to remember Sister Valerie's family. They had their, uh, her dad's um, service this morning. So let's pray for them. The Lord would give them comfort and strength. Let's also pray. Uh, if you would, remember uh, my daughter, Reagan. She needs the Lord's touch tonight. All right. Maybe you have a request you want us to pray with you about. Brother Gabe. Oh, no. All right. Sister Katie. All right. Sister Ruth. Let's remember Angela. They diagnosed her with three And they thought they might take the baby tonight, but the women sent her home. But they are going to try to hold it off maybe a couple of weeks if possible. They don't stay in time. So let's, yeah. pray for them. let's pray for them. Anyone else? Brother Blue. Okay. Let's remember. Sister Alice. Okay. Sister Monica. Yes. So pray for them. Sister Baker. Okay. Let's pray for Brother Jeff Mifflin, Sister Carell also. I know they need the Lords to help help them. All right, let's come. Let's find a place to pray, if you would.
this song. So let's get in and worship the Lord tonight. Have his way. the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to page 370 in the Red Book. Sing Revive Us Again. Sometimes, you know, I get in the middle of a scripture and then I'm like, you know what? This other scripture would finish that up right well, you know? So, <laughs> but bless, you, you guys know what I mean. Amen. Praise God. So thankful that he, you know, I love that. 
that second verse because it talks about what he's done for us and knowing that he's done that great work for us. Surely he's going to keep us. Amen. Praise God. Let's turn to page 212. Say, keep on the firing line. Oh, 
Lord, I'd make him a soldier if he wrote my name. I promise the Lord, I'd make him a soldier if he wrote my name. I promise the Lord, I'd make him a soldier. Promise the Lord, I'd make him a soldier. Promise the Lord, I'd make him a soldier if he wrote my name. I promise to stay till the battle was over till he wrote my name. Oh, I promise to stay till the battle was over till he wrote my name. I promise to stay till the battle was over. Promise to stay till the battle was over. Promise to stay till the battle was over till he wrote my name. Oh, he told me that the world would hate me if he wrote my name. Oh, he told me that the world would hate me if he wrote my name. Oh, he told me that the world would hate me. He told me that the world would hate me. He told me that the world would hate me if the Lord my name. But I say, Lord, that'll be all right. Just write my name. Oh, I say, Lord, that'll be all right. Write my name. I said, Lord, that'll be all right. Write my name in the book of life. I say, Lord. him who has chosen me to be a soldier. How about you? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's no room for quitting. We're on the firing line. Amen. Don't, don't give up. Don't turn in the towel. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep pressing on for him. Praise God. You can be seated if you like. Praise the Lord. Good presence of the Lord here tonight. Praise God. Wonderful to see you out in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. I believe the Lord has something special for us in this service tonight. So let's get in and, and have and let him have his way in our lives. Right. Amen. Praise God. Well, we had a good day and a good chapel service today. Got an opportunity to talk to the to the students there today about uh, that scripture. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and sup with him, and he with me. And and as I was studying that, I began to notice that really there's more than one door in the human heart. There really is when, you know, we think about that verse in terms of salvation and, and that's a good application for that verse. But I believe that there are sometimes there's doors that the Lord is knocking on in our heart that is beyond salvation. Maybe we've allowed him in in salvation, but maybe there's areas of sanctification that the Lord wants to work in our lives. Or maybe there's areas of surrender that he's knocking on that door, right? Maybe areas of service to the Lord. There's so many different areas. I believe that the Lord uh, would like to come in and work in our lives. Amen. And as I was thinking about that, I read a story about this, this lady. She was behind on her rent a number of months and the landlord told her he was coming to evict her any day. So she was expecting that landlord any day, but her pastor got word of the situation. And so he came with some money to help her get caught up on her rent. And he came and knocked on the front door, tried to get her attention, couldn't get her attention. So went around to the back door. He knocked on the door. He tried over and over to get uh, her to come to the door without any success and he ended up leaving uh, there. What happened was that woman was thinking that was her landlord coming to evict her and so she wouldn't answer the door. And really the person who wanted to help her the most was the one at the door but yet she turned away the one that would help, wanted to help her the most because of her fear of what would happen. You know sometimes I know I talk to the young people today but even, even us 
us as older Christians, we can uh, not really put our full trust in the Lord that he has our, our uh, best interests in mind, right? Amen. And we can turn away the one who wants to help us the most. But I want to open that door, allow him into every part of my life, let him have his way in my life. Amen. I want to be fully surrendered to him. How about you? Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, like I said, it's wonderful to have you in the Lord's house. Maybe you want to stand and testify tonight. I know we had a wonderful service Sunday night. Maybe the Lord did something good for you. You want to testify about it tonight. Amen. Anyone like to say something good for the Lord? Brother John, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Sister Slada. the Lord. still answers prayer and that's another testimony of it. Praise God. Go ahead, Brother John. I am right. thankful that God, um, regardless of yeah. the situation, 
situation right now, I know that he's moving things and he's preparing things for our betterment. Amen. And I do believe that. And, but there was something that um, he preached, I believe this was the morning service, and I, I'm not going to reread all the scripture, but when he was over there in Luke, um, just something that really stuck out to me. He, he, he touched on it a little bit, but this was the thing that just really stuck out to me. Uh, when he was speaking about the disciples, you know, on the road um, to Emmaus, you know, and as we, we, we know the story, we know how they, uh, their hearts were just heavy, you know, and, uh, not only just of the sadness, but the confusion, uh, you know, they were experiencing, sure. it, you know, and as Jesus began to walk with them, you know, he, he converses with them and, and has the, uh, you know, kind of the, you know, I like how he put it there, you know, kind of brought the question to him, why are you? Sad, you know. Yeah. yeah. And right. uh, but uh, um, I just uh, as they began to share with him, you know, oh, are you astray? Do you not know what's going on? You know, do you not see? You know, we were here. We are his followers. We followed this man for three and a half years, and and all this. And but uh, verse twenty one, it says, "But we trusted that it that it had been He which should have redeemed Israel." And the yeah. scripture there, but we trust it. Yeah. And it just, it just hit me so hard on yes. Sunday. That yeah. Regardless of what happens, I never want that to be my conclusion, the situation. Right. You know, because I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not an English major by any, any stretch of the imagination, but I know enough to know that when it says, but I. Or we we trusted that is a that is a past tense. That is well yep. we thought one thing, but we, we must have been obviously wrong. We yep. thought he was the Messiah, but but surely not. Yeah. You know, or these right. things wouldn't be. And how often do we as mm. as Christians, as believers, find ourselves in, in, in times of confusion, in times of chaos and trouble in our lives where we just get so confused over what I thought. I thought what I thought. I, this right or that right or I thought we were in your will, but then all of a sudden things seem to fall apart and right. and um, you know, and all the while the Lord knew. Yes. You know, and all the while Sunday morning was just right around the corner. Yes. It, it changed everything. And uh, you know, I just for myself it, it, it was you know the Lord just impressed, just hold on a little longer. Amen. You know, it was a great comfort to me and I I just for what it's worth I will encourage everybody else to just hold on a little longer. Yes, right. You know, um, I can't imagine the things that I go through are, are, you know, as great as they are in my life. You know, I, I still can't imagine walking with the God of heaven yes. and then for three and a half years and then seeing him hung and crucified. Right, right. And, and how that must have, what that, what that must have meant, what, how they would have felt and how they would have thought, um, and maybe even hearing the words, you know, my God, why, why has God forsaken me? Is Jesus Christ? I mean, we, we think about, I don't know, maybe I'm reading with at this point, but I just, I don't know, I've just really been dwelling a lot on that this yes. week. Just good. really trying to, yeah. um, to understand that not everything is in our control. Right. And uh, but I am thankful that I do know the one that is in here. Yes. Amen. And, and I do know that he has, he has us in his hands. And I, I do, I do yeah. desire all your prayers. Prayer is, is not in vain, uh, regardless of, of answers, regardless of, of the way that prayer is never in vain. I, I believe that. So continue to pray for us. And we're, we're still looking for God to do miracles in, in our situation. And I'm, Amen. Yeah, we're just waiting for, for Sunday morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because I still know God's going to do good things. I still trust the Lord. I, and I, just don't, I don't want to, I will not, um, and we can, I will not lose faith. I don't right. Lose faith. Right. Right. And, and I don't want to see it through. And just continue to pray for us. And Amen. And, and, Amen. I, I thank God for him. I thank God for this church and this people. Amen. Scripture says, I know in whom I have believed. Yeah. Amen. He doesn't say just, I know what I believe, but he says, I know in whom. Right. You know, sometimes the situation looks like you don't know what to believe, but we know in who we do believe. Amen. And we know he is faithful. Praise God. Sister Katie Radcliffe, would you come sing for us while she's coming? Someone else want to stand and testify real quick. Sister Bell, go ahead.
And uh, and he spoke so highly of you all, and 
to you tonight. Come ahead, Brother Gabe. Appreciate Brother Gabe, his work with our young people. Amen. Let's get in and worship the Lord with him tonight. And I'm thankful for the opportunity here tonight and I um, appreciate that. I appreciate uh, Brother David, Sister Ruth, and uh, the example that they are. They are an inspiration. Amen. And I think for brother, uh, brother Jamie and sister Allison and, and their, their ministry here too. I really appreciate them. They're great friends. Right? Thankful for the opportunity here tonight. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I, I just, I, I want to preach on just a simple thought troubled on every side, but unhindered troubled on every side, but unhindered, you know, uh, have you ever heard of the adage, uh, last words are lasting words. Last words are lasting words. And those are important. The last words that you're hearing right now, um, I'm going through an interview process or hiring a new supervisor and uh, getting a new team. And so we're going through all of that right now at work. And, you know, at the end of the interview, uh, I have a final question that I just like to ask. And it's just, how would you want us to remember you and this interview? And man, I tell you, you get all kinds of responses. Uh, <laughs> Responses, some funny, maybe some are actually memorable, some you don't want to remember. It's you get a whole the whole gambit, I guess. But you know, final words are so important. And uh, you find there, you know, brother Seth, he, he preached Sunday night, and he was talking about Matthew and the final words there in Matthew. And uh, you know, he, Jesus said, "Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world." Amen. Or let it be done. Thank the Lord, amen, that God is with us. Amen, all the way to the end of the world, through our whole life, God will be with us. Amen, that is encouraging words. I mean, I'm thankful for those last words that were spoken by Jesus there in the book of Matthew. And I'm thankful, I mean, that we can glean from that. I mean, we can be encouraged in our life. Thank the Lord. Amen. You know, no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, God will be with us. Amen. I'm glad that we can make it because the Master is with us. But I want to focus on math, the last words of Matthew. I want to actually focus on the last words of the book of Acts. So let's go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 28. Praise the Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 28. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 28, and we'll just read two verses there. And we'll, we'll talk about those verses a little bit, and then we'll get into what I feel the Lord would have us to uh, hear tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 28, verses 30 and 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God. And teaching those things which concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. No man forbidding him. No man forbidding him. Praise the Lord. And let's just bow our heads real quick and let's just ask the Lord to have his way. Amen. With the word here tonight in this message. Lord, I pray God tonight that your spirit would rest upon each one in this place tonight. The ones that are home, maybe sick listening tonight. God, I pray that Lord, your spirit would be found in each family tonight. Oh God, that they would hear your word speak into their spirit tonight. God, I pray that you'd pierce, oh Lord, the heart. God, I pray Lord, that the seed of the gospel would be found, God, in each heart here tonight. God, I pray that it would find good soil tonight, God, that you would receive glory and honor and praise. And I just thank you for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, that last phrase there of the last of that book of the book of Acts, the last chapter of Acts, it says this, no man forbidding him. Now, that's a big phrase. But it comes from one Greek word, and not to get into to all of that. The Greek word just simply means this, unhindered. 
unhindered. No man forbidding him. That Greek word literally means unhindered. And there he was. He sat there in his, his home, his hired home. And, uh, you know, he, he just he had people come in. He shared the gospel in confidence. And the Bible says that no man hindered him or no man forbid him. No man hindered him, meaning the gospel was unhindered. I mean, you know, uh, Paul, he, he, he experienced a lot of things throughout his life. But you find Luke here writing uh, that, you know, he, he, he outlines the whole book of Acts. And you'll find that he traces the birth and the growth of the church. The gospel went forth in power. As the book of Acts begins, there was only a few hundred believers of Jesus Christ. As the book, as the gospel did its work, however, tens of thousands came to Christ in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and into in the Gentile lands. There was much opposition, persecution, beatings, death, imprisonment, all threatened the spread of the gospel. So too did sinfulness within the early church. However, in spite of all of the opposition and difficulties, the author, Luke, summed up the progress of the gospel in these last words by saying that they were unhindered. The gospel was in unhindered and the work of the Lord went unhindered. Praise the Lord. I mean, I believe that the church here, we're Acts chapter 29 church. I believe the church today still goes unhindered. The gospel still goes unhindered. Unhindered. Praise the Lord. We may be experiencing trouble on every, every hand, amen, but the gospel still will go unhindered. Amen. The work of God will still go unhindered. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your Christian walk will still go unhindered. Praise the Lord. You may be troubled. Amen. But God is with us. Amen. I'm glad that, amen, the master's in the ship tonight. Amen. I'm glad that the master, amen, that can calm the sea is still in our our boat tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe that the gospel was, is, and will always be unhindered. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight, my only aim is just to preach. Troubled on every side, but unhindered. Praise the Lord. Amen. I mean, I'm fascinated by this word that was, that was shared here tonight, unhindered. You see, Luke actually had repeatedly made the same claim all throughout Acts. It may be just in different words. You find it in Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 12, 16, and also 19. He ended the book without telling us whether Paul was martyred or released from arrest because his focus was not on that. His focus was on the unhindered spread of the gospel from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. I mean, not on, not on Paul's troubles. And sometimes we can get so focused on our troubles, so focused on what we got going on in our personal lives. I mean, that, that we don't look at the gospel and what God's doing and the work that God's doing. But I pray, amen, tonight that we would look beyond the troubles and we'd see, amen, the work that God has for us and what he's going to be able to do for us. But you find that Paul's account of his life was a little bit different, wasn't it? You find Luke, the author of Acts, saying the gospel's going unhindered. But we find Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 says it's a little bit different, doesn't he? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 27, we'll read all four verses. Paul says, There are ministers of Christ, I speak as a fool, I am more, I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day have I been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, and painfulness, and watchings often, in hunger, and thirst, and fastings often, in cold, and in nakedness. Hey, trouble is, uh, Paul was saying, I have experienced trouble in my life. I mean, you know, he faced great hindrances personally, but he said the gospel still went on. I mean, you're going to face troubles in this life, but praise the Lord, God can help us through it all, and his work will go on. Praise the Lord, as we begin to study and prepare for the, the sermon here tonight, I begin to think about our wonderful 
wonderful workers that we have here at Bethel Chapel. Amen. There's a great work that's being done here, church. Amen. Don't become weary and well-doing. Amen. The gospel will go on. Amen. The gospel will be unhindered. You may be feel, feeling, amen, discouraged. You may be feeling distressed, but I want to let you know the work does not go unnoticed. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful, amen, that the gospel will go on unhindered. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can be victorious through difficulty. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to look here in three different areas. First, the gospel is unhindered by false gospels. We see that there's cults, there's liberal, liberalism, there's other distortions of the gospel, but they will never take over the true gospel, the true word. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure as bus captains and workers, we experience the effect of those false doctrines and ideologies as we go door to door. We, we witness to, to others, but I praise God, amen, that the word of the Lord, amen, the gospel will still go un, un, unhinged, praise the Lord, I'm so thankful for that, unhindered, praise God, amen, we see, amen, that we don't have to be discouraged, because the Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days, Isaiah 55, 11 says this, so shall my word be that God goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish which I please. It shall prosper the thing whereunto I sent it. Praise the Lord. Without a doubt, these verses apply to the written word of God as well. Praise the Lord. Cast thy daily bread and the seed of the gospel out, and it will not return void. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the face of false beliefs and discouragement, you may receive. Praise the Lord. Just keep casting out the seed. Amen. God will bring forth an abundance. Praise God. Amen. I want to encourage you here tonight. Amen. You may be experiencing difficulty out on the field. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you can see a victory. Praise the Lord. You can, amen, see abundant harvest. I'm thankful for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Secondly, the gospel is unhindered by our failures and shortcomings. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. I don't know about you, church, but I'm human. Amen. I've made mistakes so many times, but the devil would love to come and he would love to lie to us and say, because of your shortcomings, because of your failures, because of your inadequacies, you'll never make a difference. But I'm thankful that the gospel still goes on unhindered. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may walk into this place feeling like a failure. Amen. But take heart. God is on your side and he will give you strength. And I'm thankful. Amen. He's the one that gives us power. Amen. To overcome every lie of the enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16 says this. For just men fall a seven times and riseth up again. Praise the Lord. Failure is not final. Failure is not fatal. This is not the end. Amen. If you feel like you've fallen and you feel like you, you can't go on, you feel like a failure, get back up. Praise the Lord. Amen. God will give you strength to stand back up and keep fighting. Amen. The gospel will go on unhindered. I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to take a look at Peter's life. Amen. You, you know, I, I look to Peter's life for encouragement many times. There he was. He was one of the 12. He was one of the closest. He was the voice of the disciples to, to Jesus many times over. And he, he, did, he did well all through the, the years of Christ's ministry. And there Christ was at the end. And you find uh, Peter ended up denying him. He failed the Lord. Amen. Did Peter's failure exclude him from Christ's plans for the future? No. In fact, Peter was the very first of the 12 that Jesus appeared to after he risen. Christ restored Peter in a touching moment on the Sea of Galilee. Amen. Peter then went on to become the leader of the disciples preaching the very first evangelical message after the day of Pentecost. As a result, more than 3,000 people were saved. Amen. Romans chapter 11, 29 and 30 says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Amen. I'm thankful that we can reach out. We can have mercy. Amen. We can be given mercy. And I'm thankful that God will continue. Amen. To, to pull 
us and to draw us. Amen. By his wonderful spirit. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And lastly and thirdly, I mean, the gospel is unhindered in spite of our fearful circumstances. Amen. I felt the Lord really speaking to me, and I just want to bring this to, to the church here tonight. Amen. This world's in a really dark place. We know that. We find, you know, that, that, that we see evil rising. We see, you know, the, the fall in, in Afghanistan. We see that it's in a dark place. But I want to let you know the gospel will go on even in a place like that. We have, church, we have brothers and sisters there. Even right today, they may be facing persecution. But I can promise you this. The gospel will go unhindered. Amen. In Afghanistan. I'm thankful. Amen. That though we may face fearful circumstances, praise the Lord, the gospel will go unhindered. Amen. I, as I begin to study, God placed this, this portion of scripture on my heart. It's in 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 10. It says this. Amen. For God, who commend, commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power be, may be found of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our bodies. Hallelujah. You may be going through some dark times here, amen, tonight, but I'm going to let you know, amen, amen, that the Lord is here, amen, and you will be able to go on unhindered. Praise the Lord. You may be troubled on every side, amen, but don't be distressed here tonight. You may be perplexed, but don't be in despair. Praise God. Amen. You may be experiencing some hard times and hard situations in the ministry. You may feel that there's a law, amen, you know, in the ministry that you have there in the buses, but I want to let you know, amen, the gospel will go on unhindered. Keep sowing the seeds of the gospel. Amen. You will see a reward. Praise God. Amen. You may be feeling persecuted tonight. Amen. But you're not forgotten by the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. That we're not forgotten by God. You may be cast down, but, but child of God, you will not be destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at the verse 8 there. It says, we were troubled on every side, but not distressed. Praise God. Amen. Therefore, further on in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 7, 5, and 6, praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm closing here tonight. For when we were coming to Macedonia, Paul says, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. And I love the next verse, the next phrase that says this. Nevertheless, God. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, God. Amen. You may be here tonight and you say, I'm troubled on every hand and every side. I, I look to my left and I look to my right and I see, I see problems. I see troubles. Amen. I don't know if I can go on. I don't know if the ministry will go on. I don't know what I'm going to do. Nevertheless, God. Hallelujah. Amen. The verse goes on and says, that comforteth those that are cast down. Amen. You may walk in this place here tonight feeling cast down. Amen. Amen. The Lord can raise you up. I'm thankful for that. Nevertheless, God. Hallelujah. Let's all stand here tonight. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. That we all we have to do is just keep sowing the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. I think about, I think about the, the sower who went forth to sow. You know, it's not our responsibility to worry about the difficulties of the soil, but just to sow the gospel. The sower went forth to sow. I'm sure it was hot. I'm sure there was a lot of ground to cover. I'm sure the sower faced difficulty, but he sowed anyway. Amen. I just want to encourage the church here tonight. If you're facing difficulty, if you're facing trouble, sow on. Amen. Cast the seeds. Praise the Lord. And I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Paul, he was sharing in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, all the things.
things that he went through, all the persecutions, all the trouble that he faced. There was so much that was going on in his life, so many difficulties that he faced. Physically, he faced those hindrances. But he gave an example after he said all of those. And those next two verses following that whole list of things that he faced, all the different perils. He said this, he gave an example. In Damascus, the governor of Aratas, the king, kept the city of Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket, I was let down by the wall and escaped his hands. You may feel like the devil surrounded you. You feel like the garrison of the devil surrounded you. There's no way out. God's here to provide a window tonight. Nevertheless, God, I'm glad that we, when we're distressed, we can look to God. He can provide a window. And here tonight, I believe he's providing that for you. Amen. Amen. You may feel discouraged, perplexed. Amen. But we've got a God. Amen. That can save us from every situation. Amen. There's a window. And there's a basket. I'm thankful for that. Let's all bow our heads here. Close our eyes. Hallelujah. I'm not ignorant of the fact that we all face difficulties in our life. There's been times in our lives that we feel like we're going to give up, that we're going to toss in the towel and say, this is it, I'm done. But I'm glad that when we're troubled on every side, amen, God has made a way for us. The gospel will go unhindered. The work of God will go on. Amen. I'm thankful for the victory of the Lord. When we come up here and find a place to pray, I just want us to pray. God, I know that I'm troubled on every side, but would you empower me to make it through and to see your gospel unhindered? Praise the Lord. It's a statement of faith in the power of God and his provision for us. Amen. Let's all come and find a place to pray here tonight. in our life, oh God, troubled on every side, but thank God we can go on, hallelujah.
where he said, Man, the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. You know, many times we feel like that the gospel is unhindered in spite of those things that happen to us, but sometimes I believe it's because of those things that happen to us that the gospel goes forward. Amen. And many times we can look at these things as, as terrible things, but many times if you look back on them years later, you see the hand of God in, even in the horrible things that, of your life. Amen. That God is still working. Amen. The gospel is still going forward. Amen. Praise God. Appreciate the preaching, Brother Gabe. Amen. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Praise God. Dear Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight. Thank you for the word that we've heard tonight. I pray, God, that you would go with us. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage your people, strengthen them, and help them, Lord. Keep each one, keep each family, protect them, Lord, this week. I pray that you would go with us and bring us back on Sunday. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you.